Welcome to Gotta Ask. This is a presentation of Ump Life, the premier provider of customized umpire accessories and unique game use amenities. Tonight's guest is Dave Ducat, the founder of Umpires Without Borders. Please type your questions in the chat box below and we will get them to Dave as soon as we can. If you would like to join during the live broadcast, please contact Umpire Speaks or post it in the chat area below. This video will be posted to the Ump Life page after tonight's show for viewing. Keep in mind, this feed is about 30 to 40 seconds behind what you are actually seeing. And now the host of Gotta Ask, Ray Brownlee! Thanks, Tommy. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the show. Uh, we're going to change gears tonight, and we're going to go in a different direction. It's about umpiring. It's about giving back. And... I want to welcome my first guest. My only guest tonight is Dave Ducat. Hey, Dave, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Ray. Appreciate being here. Not only are you an admin on uh, Ump Life and you do a great job, uh, we have a really great uh, bunch of guys who help out on a daily basis. Um, tell me a little about your background. Well, yeah, thanks. And I, thanks for allowing me to be an admin on Ump Life. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. And uh, we do have a great bunch of guys. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of the... Uh, I think I'm the odd one out, really, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I mean, my background is I've been uh, doing this umpire thing for a long time. Uh, I started when I was uh, 12 years old, and uh, as we were talking uh, before we kind of got live here, uh, this will be my 40th season as an umpire somewhere doing something. And, um, you know, I've, had, I've been fortunate to do uh, really both sides of ball, so both baseball and softball. I've been really fortunate to do ball at all different levels, including college, um, high school, you know, rec leagues, travel, little league, various other national programs, you know, USSA and uh, a bunch of those. And then I actually had a, a really short stint. It was extremely short uh, in what would be probably called semi-pro baseball. Back mm. in the in the late 80s, there was a team uh, in my hometown that basically I don't think they even paid enough for beer money uh that they were considered semi-pro and i i got a chance to do some officiating there so um it's been a pretty interesting time and career and uh you know i love i love the i love the sports and i love to do the officiating thing and i love to teach as well that's really what my passion is now is teaching training and and showing and getting things to people and we can talk more about that around on bars without borders well that's my next question how did you we all know about ums care charity and the great job they do mm -hmm. um and so basically that's pretty well North American. Um, yeah. How did you come up with the idea of umpire without borders? Well, you know, <laughs> it, it's actually somewhat self-serving. Um, you know, one of the things that, uh, and, and many people may are probably aware that I'm very active in the little league program and have been all of my career. That's where I started at 12 years old was in little league. And I've, I've continued to be a part of that program really since to, to today and continue to be that. I really wanted to get overseas. I mean, I really wanted to go umpire off of American soil. I thought, you know, with the, with the rise of, of baseball and softball, particularly in, in places like Australia, you know, Korea, Japan. I mean, Japan, of course, has been there for a long time, as is Korea. But, you know, places like that and also places in Europe that I knew that were um, – interested in baseball and we're kind of up and coming. And, and one of the benefits of, of being in the little league program is that they actually have as other programs do, but they have, you know, foreign, uh, you know, foreign opportunities to go and officiate as part of the program as a volunteer. And so um, in 2016, uh, I was my, or I'm sorry, in 2015 was my first application to go overseas uh, for a regional tournament and I didn't get it. Uh, and then 2016, I also applied and didn't get it. But in 2016, I thought, well, wait a minute. You know, I, I started through Facebook, actually gaining a lot of, you know, interaction with people mm -hmm. from overseas and, you know, in, in a lot of different places. And one of the things I kept seeing off, over and over again was how expensive equipment was and how difficult it was to get. And, um, you know, I don't mean to make this an incredibly long story, but actually in 2016, uh, a, a, a gentleman from Nepal reached out to me uh, because he had seen me post on, on Facebook in the umpires forum, uh, which is what I'm also an admin over there, by the way. And um, he, uh, he reached his reach out to me out of the blue and said, Hey, can you help me get some stuff? Or would you help me with umpire training? And I went, wait a minute, you're in Nepal. Like 
Nepal, the country of Nepal. Why? I didn't know they played yeah. baseball in Nepal, you know, at 15,000 feet. And, and it was actually a, such a huge, it was just a huge experience for me to just have that conversation that I'm like, wait a minute, I, I could probably figure out some way to, to get myself over there, just to get over there and, and be a part of it, but also to help sort of, you know, bridge the gap in terms of getting equipment and training and other things to those people. And, you know, that's where, that was the genesis of the idea. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to work together yet. We're still trying to figure that out because the expense is just astronomical. I mean, flights to Nepal alone, even today are very expensive, but I did get a chance. We can talk more about that uh, to work with other folks in South Africa, um, Nigeria, uh, in, in Latin America. And so, yeah, it's been, it, you know, the, the genesis of that was from someone from Nepal, but it's been really, really interesting to work with other people in the world too. Did you go to um, the Czech Republic? So I didn't go to the Czech Republic, but I did, I did officiate the Czech Republic. So I went to, I went to Holland first. Okay. Uh, so that went to the Netherlands, uh, the Southeast corner of Holland, uh, right out, right near the Belgian border. Uh, in a town called Morhessel, uh, which is where the the softball, all of the softball tournaments for Europe for Little League are held. And I officiated that in 2018. And then last year, last summer, I was in Poland, uh, which is where all the Little League turn, oh, not all of them, I'm sorry, two of them are held for, uh, li for Little League Baseball and Junior League Baseball. And uh, they also have a qualifier, which I did. So I did the two, I did the qualifier and the major boys, which is the 10 to 12 or nine to 12 division. And they also have a purpose built, built facility there. Too. Yeah, the, the entire facility is is built exactly for that. Whereas in Holland, um, they're using other facilities. They're using, but, but again, what was really interesting about that, Ray, and, and I, I got to say, um, and I know that you're very passionate about this sport at the from the amateur level too, right? To see people do it and play it. And I know you've played yourself at various levels of, in your time uh, in the sport. To go there uh, overseas and see kids who are of all different backgrounds, right? Lithuanian, Czech, Hung Hungarian, Dutch, French. I mean, who knew that the French played baseball? You know, French, Germans, uh, you know, Great Britain or, you know, British all these kids, especially playing a sport that's not their national sport. It's not even the third or fourth sport. It's a distant, you know, it's down the road. And in, in the case of like Belarus, for example, where, you know, that country is still run by a dictator. I mean, it's run by an oligarch, right? And these kids are literally taking their lives in their hands when they're trying to play an American sport or a Western sport. And uh, to see them all be in the same place and being kids and playing baseball in the softball in the purest way possible. I mean, literally, you know, yes, it was competitive, but it was just the unmitigated joy of those kids and their parents. And to see them, it was just such an incredible experience that I knew I had to do something with this umpires without borders thing mm -hmm. to be able to get that to anybody who could use it. I, uh, I'm a former, I lived in the UK for yeah. the longest time. I played with the national team program. I umpired all over Europe. Uh, and my first experience of baseball outside of North America was I was over in the UK playing ice hockey. And I saw in a, in a newspaper a baseball team. So it was 15 miles away from where I was living. So I drove down there on a Sunday morning. And there they were. There was young kids and men. And they were live batting practice. And the catcher had no gear. Yeah. They're on yeah. a soccer field, and he's just ducking every time. Like the guy swings, and, and so finally, I I walked over. I said, uh, "You know, you can get a goalie mask, get something. You're, you're going to get hurt." But I've been fortunate enough to see all those places in Europe playing with the national team, and I know exactly what you're talking about. And when Russia was still Russia, mm -hmm. uh, I met up with a, a Russian team in a uh, in Spain, and they would trade all the Yuri Gagarin watches, mm -hmm. all the military uh, bearskin hats, they brought them to Spain. It's 105 degrees. <laughs> and they're trading this stuff for yeah. base, for your t-shirt. Yeah, exactly. So I'll give you a Yuri Gagarin watch and a bearskin hat for that t-shirt. Yeah. And I'm just like, after I, I left, I left Spain with no equipment. 
<laughs> and most of these guys are it. military age. And yeah. and there was one guy, <laughs> strange name, Igor. Uh, I kept in contact with him for about four years. And everything I ever sent him to Russia never made it to him. Yeah. It just that's, disappeared. That's the challenge. Absolutely. So, it, yeah, I mean, I, I, I love the concept. And to be able to help someone or put them on the right uh, start or path. I mean, that's fantastic. So um, if there's anybody um, wanting to ask Dave questions, just type them into Umpire Speaks below. Um, we'll get them some questions. Um, Tommy, you got any questions for Dave? Uh, there's no questions right now, but I'm sure we'll get some shortly. I've shared this to uh, the umpires group where Dave is also an admin. Nice. And I'm an admin there as well. So um, I, I was going through the website to today, uh, mm -hmm. umpireswithoutborders.com, and just to see, and I've seen them post on Ump Life all the donations that you've made so far, and yeah. just to see their face. And, and some of that equipment is top drawer. It's yeah, like, no, it really is. As a matter of fact, <laughs> sorry, because you're off. As a matter of fact, I did some inventory over the weekend, over our Memorial Day weekend here, also known as cleaning and, and organizing. Yeah. And uh, I actually have a, I've got a, I've got a, a, a dated, but a full West vest, you know, original West vest in there that someone donated, wow. you know? So yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty lucky. Yeah. If you want to scroll down, thanks for bringing that up, Tommy. If you want to scroll down for a second, all I mean, that gear. I look at that today and I'm going, just yeah. look at their, look at their faces. Yeah. All the gear behind them, all mm -hmm. that gear was donated uh, by Empires Without Borders. And you're right. Uh, and on the, on the far right there is uh is Femi? That's his name, mm -hmm. and uh, he's the he's the the one who's really behind. He's the one who contacted me, and he's a he's a member of Ump Life as well as other umpire forums, and he is just a powerhouse. I mean, he is so dedicated. He is so he loves baseball. He loves the sport, and and to be perfectly candid, you know, if you see these, these are all young men, right? Who, frankly, don't have a lot of options. You know, their mm -hmm. options are exceptionally limited. Um, and, and if they're not going to be a statistic, they, they find some kind of thing to glom onto, whether it's sport or, or other things. And he's really making good young men out of these, out of these boys. And I, I, it's, I couldn't have, I couldn't have asked for a better thing to, to get involved with myself. So, um, yeah, it's, it's incredible. How, uh, how difficult is it? It's easy to get a donation, even though that's hard to get people to, yeah. there's, there's everybody down the street in our own area needs equipment. And yeah. I, I basically donate everything every year that I'm not going to use. It goes, um, it's hard to, to get it. Let's say Nepal, it's hard to get it to South Africa. Yeah. It's like, how does, first of all, getting donations, let's, we're going to try and figure out a way how to help you get. Thank you. I appreciate that. And we'll also figure out a way how to link up with a international shipper so we'll we'll, uh, we'll work on that figure it out. we'll try to help you that way well i appreciate that and actually i should probably mention since we're talking about it that you know of course you're you and umpire for a great supporter of, of umpires without borders and you designed our logo so thank you for that appreciate um it. and you are a sponsor as is ump attire and jim yeah. and his team uh and then there's another organization called ump strong which is actually uh tim far i don't know if you know him or not you probably do I don't yeah know. He, yeah, he's uh, he's a, a NCAA Division One umpire out of South Bend, Indiana, who has a lot of that equipment came from him and his organization because he actually does he did some of the same thing, but was collecting it primarily for local and other you know sort of use around the area. And when he learned about Umpires Without Borders, he was he was the first person to reach out and say, "Hey, I've got stuff here for you." So. Um, Again, he and I, I drove out to get it, and you know, you're right. The challenge is, of course, getting gear. And I look, I'm I'll be the first person to say I've spent far more, far too much money on gear, and 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 far too much money on Ump Life products. But I love them anyway, so I, I buy them. But um, you know, yeah, that that's hard to part with, especially in these pandemic times where people are losing jobs and they're losing umpire income and and can't return that income into gear and other things. I fully appreciate that, but. You know, if there's any way that anybody has a has even just a mask laying around, or has has a set of, uh, has a bunch of ball bags, I mean, you'd be surprised at what people actually just love. I mean, Jim, as a just a quick example, umpire, uh, umpire gave me uh, or gave UWB 
uh, a whole bunch of ball bags, you know, new, you know, Smitty bags, you know, new in, in packages. And, and they got sent to those folks. They had never even, they didn't even know what a ball bag was. Hmm. And now they each have enough for two per person. They can look the part, they can, all those things. And so, yeah, I mean, even if you don't think your stuff is worthwhile, let me make that decision. You know, let me, let me help you make that decision. Send it to me uh, and we'll get you, we'll get you a letter, a tax letter. You can write it off and, you know, get it, and it, it will get to somebody who can use it. What's your, uh, what's your biggest cost in running umpires without borders? Well, the biggest cost is, is any kind of shipping. It just, it just is right. So to your point, um, I was fortunate in that all that gear that went, that was Nigeria, by the way, all that gear that went to Nigeria was hand carried by uh, an individual, uh, a, a friend of uh, Femi's there, so wow. who was based in Minneapolis. So he literally carried it, you know, extra suitcases. Um, he he paid for that extra baggage cost on his own, and um, you know he was able to carry that across. But I mean, shipping is just is just astronomically expensive, uh, especially getting to a place like Nigeria, where you know, to your point earlier about Russia, you know, there is an issue with stuff not getting to people insurance is exceptionally expensive and it's a racket um you know i, I know that ump attire uh sent some stuff there as well and had issues with customs and being stuck in customs you know stuck in customs oh, yeah. for a, a long period of time until someone paid the right people the right amount of money to get it out so those are the kinds of things that are really just difficult to to deal with and and you know to take to go to someplace like in nepal um, it has to take multiple modes of transportation. Usually, um, you can't fly. Well, depends on how much stuff you're sending, but like th those three bags, for example, would have gone on a pallet. They would have had to go on a ship. Then they would have gone drayage on a truck. And it just, you know, it just adds up. Yeah. There's no way around shipping costs unless uh, no. we can find a sponsor for you. Well, and to, be, and to be perfectly candid, I would love to get that. Right. So, you know, if there's a, if there's someone out there who has access to a travel organization or a shipping company or you know i know that a number of your of your subscribers in ump life as well as umpires are in the in that business um if there's anything we can do to work together i'm all ears because uh to, to be again i don't get enough in terms of mo monetary donations to cover those costs um i don't get enough in monetary donations to cover pretty much any costs it's really a lot of it's coming out of my pocket frankly and the shipping is coming out of my pocket right now so we did have uh, Tim Farwig would like to say thanks for the shout out for Umpire Strong, Dave. Uh, they said they will be out collecting more this summer at various sites in the Midwest. Yeah, we also Tim's have a couple of questions now. Oh, great. Yeah. Tim's an awesome guy. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. Thanks, so, Tim. First question is from David Duarte. And I'm sorry, I probably said your name incorrectly. Duarte, right? Yeah, Duarte. Um, did, did you ever go to umpire school? And if so, which one and what year? So, you know, <laughs> it's funny. Um, I was telling Ray before we got on the on the line here that you know i've done i've been an umpire for a long time but uh and i did a lot of work but i never went to a professional umpire school um i didn't even know about them frankly until i was already almost 20 years into my umpire career and you know that's a, probably a big regret that i i have right now is I, I have not gone to a professional school i would certainly love to go um if i could figure out how to make it work with my work alignment i would go just for the experience I, I have no aspirations certainly not anymore at the age of, at the ripe old age of 52 i'm not getting any contracts uh even if i were in in you know that good but um just to have the experience and, and sort of polish the the diamond if you will uh, i would love to be able to do that i i have gone to umpire school through the little league program um in 2003, I went to umpire school first in Indianapolis, and then I became an instructor uh, in the middle, like 2015, 16, 17 timeframe. Uh, and uh, I work with some, I worked with and still do work with some really great people in the central region who are, who have gone to umpire school. They actually brought that training to the region. And so um, while I haven't gone through the, the actual school, I do believe I'm, I'm around a lot of really talented people. Yeah, for sure. All right. So the next question we have is from uh, one of our former uh, former guests, Perry Barber. Dave, Hi, Perry. will you tell us a little bit about your experiences umpiring baseball for all tournaments? Wow, that's a pretty 
big question. That's a pretty broad question. And and first of all, by the way, Perry is awesome. If you've never had a chance to speak to Perry or work with Perry, you should. Um, she's incredible. And I got a chance to meet her finally in person after years of of binging back and forth on on uh, Facebook at the uh, at the girls U.S. Girls National Tournament, which is held in Rockford, which is just outside Chicago where I live. And it was incredible. I mean, just incredible. I. I I was I was starstruck sitting there, and and frankly I tower over Perry. I'm like you know six three, and but she's she's much bigger than I am. So thank you for the question, Perry. Um, you know, um, I, I've been fortunate to have a lot of broad experiences. You know, pretty much. And and, and here's the thing I guess I would say is that I still love this game. I mean, um, I've I've been. Yeah, and, and of course, as umpires, we typically go to the negative ones. I'm going to go to those first really quickly just because we all have them, right? You getting, you know, cursed at, spit on, threatened in parking lots, um, you know, attacked in parking lots, attacked on the field. You know, I've had just about every experience you can think of negatively except being shot. And uh, I hope to not have that one. Mm -hmm. But I have had all of those, including being mobbed in a parking lot, having, you know, being mobbed at a regional tournament. Um, having to deal with unruly fans uh, who, you know, seem to know baseball and softball better than you do, which they all do, of course, from their, their prime seating, you know, all those things. But, you know, but I, I will say the good certainly outweighs that, right? Um, I was fortunate enough to officiate the Little League World Series in 2017 um, and, you know, got to be on the field for what is probably one of the biggest benefits of that program which is the challenger game and you know which is a, which is to to work with disabled uh youth and young adults and give them an opportunity to play baseball or softball and to be on the field with those kids and their families and the team members of teams that volunteered it, it i'm gonna cry because it was such a heartwarming wonderful experience which reignited re reignited my passion to to be on the field and help uh you know it, that was a great experience to be in the international spotlight you know on espn uh several times in my career has been fun i mean realize that you know perry of course being in the in the professional game she was on tv all the time but for me being on tv you know four or five times in my in my umpire career has been something that's been um you know, just, I, I can't thank people enough for giving that opportunity. Um, you know, having to see, watching kids go through programs into their young adult age and then to adult playing ball. I mean, I got a chance to see many young players come through, including those that went on to the major leagues and be able to say that I, I officiated them and they're, you know, they went through the program meeting professional umpires. I mean, one of the cool things about my Little League experience was I got to meet uh, Jerry Davis directly as part of that Little League uh, World Series experience. It was the first year they did that. And I got to meet his whole crew, you know, Jerry Davis, Rob Drake, Ramon Jesus, Tony Randazzo, who's also from Chicago, and he's bigger than I am, which I didn't think that was, you know, so he came, gave me a giant bear hug. And, you know, Pat Holberg, right, to meet all those, those people who you've been watching on television or, you know, on the internet for years and then having a chance to, to see, to meet them in this profession that we do. It was just exciting. And, and I've got so many more, I could talk for hours on stories, but, oh, and meeting Reggie Jackson was cool too. I have to say for the oh. record, Ed, Reggie Jackson, Eddie Murray, that was cool because I grew up watching those guys play. That was, you know, that was the ability to see that. And um, as part of the umpire experience and, Carlton Fisk, who is here in the Chicago area, I, I did high school ball where he was coaching briefly, you know, so stuff like that. There's all kinds of all kinds of experiences. I'm not sure that answered your question, Perry, but I hope it did. I uh, I actually met Perry in '97 or '98. I was actually uh, my wife and I were over in, in Florida, and my buddy was umpiring at Coco Expo, yeah. and. Uh, Perry, I think Perry was on the plate that day. And after the game, my buddy Terry introduced me to Perry. And um, she'd forgotten all about it till I reminded her about six months ago. I said, we've actually met before. And she goes, where? I go, Coco Expo. 
She goes, who was I working with? So I said the name and she goes, oh, that's the spy, the guy who works for the government. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> so yeah, like, yeah. and then I then got Perry on the show. So it's, uh, and I thought of Perry back then, I said, wow, this girl can work. He's good. Well, one thing I, I got to tell you, Ray, I, and, I, and this is, and you know, something that I was really, I knew you were a great guy anyway, but when I remember you wrote something on Facebook a while, probably quite some time ago about a female mentor of yours yeah uh, and and i gotta tell you that really moved me not because you know i because i think that there aren't enough of us who are actually really saying that who are really showing that you know women particularly other other groups you know and I, this is another reason why i kind of wanted to do on parts of the borders too was reach out to those those fringe groups of people you know uh and really be able to get them into the profession and well, that- uh when yeah. I mentioned um, Lisa Turbot, that's who. Yeah, it is. Lisa, exactly. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, when I moved back to Canada, I, I couldn't get anywhere to yeah. get back into umpiring, and I looked on the website, and I, I actually Googled Lisa. Yeah. And then I all of a sudden this resume <laughs> kept growing and growing and growing. Yeah. I contacted her, and within twenty minutes. Uh, who a guy who's now my friend, former double A umpire, Keith McConkey, phoned me. He yeah. goes, You're living in my area? Come to our meeting tomorrow night. There you go. And if, if I hadn't, I picked Lisa for a reason because the guys on that website, I was emailing the one guy, no reply. Yeah. So I finally looked at Lisa, uh, boom, send her an email. And literally 20 minutes after that email was sent, I got a phone call. Mm-hmm. So, and then uh, Lisa got me into the Baseball Canada program. And and you know what? I have no problem saying one of my best teachers ever is a girl. Yeah. I have no, she's good. Yeah. And when you actually look at her whole resume or CV, you go, man, mine's on my pinky nail. Yeah. Hers is the whole body length. So, sure. and, and Perry's had a great career. And, and I talked to Kelly Elliott Dino a lot. Yeah. And you know what? The level she's working. Sure. You can teach me stuff too. Well, and that's the thing. I'm glad you said that because we're all still students of this thing, no matter what it is. Right. I mean, even, you know, when you had Joe West on the other day or last couple of weeks, I mean, he's still learning the game and he's, he's Joe West. I mean, come on. So I, you know, I think that that's a huge, a huge opportunity and it is kind of a side reason why I created UWB was also to get to, as I said, those different groups of people who you wouldn't necessarily think of. And I was fortunate enough just to kind of reemphasize this point. I was fortunate enough to be on a podcast a little while ago by a guy named Daniel Michael, who I hope is listening. Uh, he runs his own podcasting and he was kind enough to invite me to be on it. And he's on the spectrum and, you know, he's, he's really passionate about that idea. And that kind of, you know, that, that hit home with me to be able to get to people who are on the spectrum, who may not have thought that they could be, you know, doing this thing and doing it well you know, that's another way that we can get to them too with UWB is, is get to those groups, veterans, law enforcement officers, all these different groups of people who just aren't catered to and, and could be. Uh, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of ways to communicate. And I, I, I think that as, an, as umpires, if we were more proactive in helping people instead of tearing people down, mm-hmm. it would be a lot, a lot nicer community. But we have, totally agree. you know, like, just because um, you've done something one way for 40 years yep. and it doesn't mean you've been doing it right. And if someone can offer you advice, mm-hmm. like you take on board with a, you know, take it in, see if it works for you. If it doesn't, you know, but well, I've been doing that for 40 years. Well, you've been doing it wrong for 40 years. Yeah. You know, we, if you can't evolve, you're in trouble. Yeah. Agreed. So, and, I, and I would argue the other way too, that if you, if you've been doing it right for 40 years, doesn't mean it's the only right way. That's correct. And more importantly, just because, as an example, right, point of plate going to third base line extended, that became the de facto standard forever, right? Mm-hmm. And we all knew it, we all breathed it, and we all lived it. But then when the wedge actually became, you know, w- from theory to reality, well, look, I mean, it works. Not only does it work, it works not just at home, you know, play, it works everywhere yeah. because it makes sense. It's logical, it makes sense. And so it doesn't mean, you know, and, and people will say, and I know I'm kind of an umpire historian, people will say, well, that was the old American League mechanic back in the day. And that's 
that's true. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it goes out of favor, but there are ruling bodies and groups of people who, you know, sort of demand you follow their thing until they're ready to change too. So it's like replay now. Every yeah. MLB guy I've talked to, um, the old guys at first, well, I don't like this at all. <laughs> Young guys they didn't care because yeah. their automatic feedback to themselves was if I get overturned, I can learn. I could have just turned my head three inches the other way. Well, exactly. So yeah. Young guys, it does it even now. It, it doesn't scare the old guys because it's actually proven that they're actually really good at their job. So, yeah. Um, but the young guys have that attitude. Hey, you know what? It, it's a it's a training tool. So they're all for it because mm -hmm. it's now it's part of the game when they got hired, and it doesn't phase them. So, and you know what? Some nights yeah. you get overturned twice or three times, and there's yeah. going to be games where every call you made was upheld. So it's a quick game, and it's it's inches. Yeah, you know, it's funny you mentioned that too because I'm you know, I was very much against it in the in the pro game mm -hmm. just because I, you know, to me that was kind of that's what they're there for, right? And and whatever they do, they don't do and the color of that and the characters associated, I think that was all part of the pro game. But I think it's an incredible tool for the amateur or, you know, the, the recreational game. I mean, I was on replay for the first time in 2016. Mm -hmm. Um or yeah tw no 2014 well some back when it was still it was still early and actually little league was the ones who came out replay first uh and then joe torrey saw it and said we should do this for the major leagues too but mm -hmm. i was on replay for the first time and it was a pretty unnerving experience but the ability to go back and look at that as as, as a as a training tool and the recording of that information is is priceless like you kiss it's priceless and um, we, you know, everybody should get a chance to do that. Is you know, once you get over the nerves of knowing you're being watched, kind of thing, um, do it because it's such a great tool. Tommy, I know something that a lot of people, um, at least in the umpiring world, and if you work with me, that happens is people forget the we need to have fun when we're out there on the field oh, and yes. at these umpire fun. events. <laughs> um, and I'm a big proponent of that, as you know. Uh, you handle your business, but yeah. don't forget you're there to have some fun. Um, what's been your experiences over the years with that at various levels Yeah, con concerning some people who are very serious and they're just, they're the, the people who are hundred percent serious all the time. And those that have a little bit of fun every once in a while. Well, you know, I'm glad you asked or you asked that question or made that statement because this is still a game, right? These are games. I mean, you know, and, and yes, there's a seriousness to it. There's a professionalism and I, and you'll, you'll probably, <laughs> if you've ever followed an umpire forum where I'm on it, you're going to probably see me post sometime at some point in time about what professionalism means. And it's not about the money. It's about the attitude you bring. You know, you can, you know, I volunteer my time many times over the course of, you know, for anything, the little league, for example, is all volunteer for me. I still bring a level of professionalism, I believe to those experiences and I don't get paid for them. But uh, so I think, you know, there was a, okay, I guess I would say, you know, I, I grew up watching Dutch Rennert and that era of umpires, right? And those guys, those people were all characters. I mean, every one of them was a character and that was part of the game. And you knew, you knew that they were having a great time out there, you know? And yeah, they had their issues and, you know, personal and otherwise. I mean, there's, there's clearly stories about um, various biases and, you know, what have you. But, you know, those guys, those people had fun doing that job. And then, you know, there was a period of time, and I think it's it's getting worse to some degree, where uh, the, the schools and the mechanisms of training umpires became exceptionally robotic to the point where we were robotic, you know, roboticking the, the individualism out of people um, and to the point of, of making them unintentionally invisible, um, which I don't think is valuable to the game as a whole. Um, I do understand why I, when I teach, I fully want people to do things exactly the same way over and over again, because I want to make sure they understand it, but that doesn't mean that they have to be that way forever. And so, um, I, you know, I, I think that the fun has, the fun certainly went away for me for a long time. I, I will say that for a record. It went away for me for a long time. Um, and I was also doing things like district umpire, district umpire in chief and schedule and assigners and all these sort of things too, because, you know, when you get involved in programs, there's not nearly enough people volunteering their time. And so you're doing everything too. 
Um, so I got burned out with that pretty quickly. I, I believe that you have to have a level of interaction and fun, but you have to have the same level of professionalism on the field and off the field and, and be able to make that switch um, pretty quickly. And, and, you know, and frankly, you know, you, you both know me, I'm a pretty big stickler for things, you know, rules, mechanics. Um, you know, I don't, I don't suffer fools and those kinds of things, but at the end of the day, if you're not having fun and you shouldn't be out there. I think uh, at, the, at the minor league level, um, once you get out of A ball, yeah. you can let your personality out. Yeah, of course. You get to double A and you're working three guys. You, you, now you're doing this. You're, you yeah. know, you're, you can whack a guy. Whereas the first couple of years, it's all, like you said, robotics. But I think if they can master that part, they can now let the personality grow, grow with them as they, sure. or come out as they move up the ladder. So, um, yeah, one of the things I, was, I would say about that, Ray, I think you're right. And I think in the pro game, it's certainly different than in the amateur game, right? One of the things that frustrates the ever-living thing out of me is seeing high school umpires. This is not a knock on high school umpires because I'm one too. But high school umpires who've never gone to a training, who've never dealt with, you know, and they've, they've, they've been getting their assignments because they're the, they show up. And they have this very cavalier way of doing things. And they make these giant grandiose, you know, they're, they're, they're hobnobbing with coaches and all this other thing. And then they're making these giant, you know, big sweeping plays. That's, that's fine. I get it. But that's what I'm talking about where you have to sort of earn that right too, right? You have to earn the ability to have that, that level of, of fun on the field to some degree. And I think you're right. I mean, the, 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 the folks in minor league ball, particularly in a ball, they have to kind of go through the process and then they kind of become, you know, their, their individual selves. So. Tommy? So we don't have any questions in the room right now. Um, so um, what else we want to do guys? Let's talk about, um, you know, you talked about your experience with little league and tournaments. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about your transition from being on the field, actually working games to some of the administrative stuff you've had to do behind the scenes. Uh, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> I, um, you know, I, one of the other things I do in my my time is I'm also part of the scouting program, Boy Scouting, Boy Scouts of America. I've, I'm an Eagle Scout. I've been involved in that program since I was a Cub Scout, and I still am part of that program as, a, as an adult. And uh, people ask me all the time, well, how do you ever find time to do all this stuff? And I, I don't. I don't sleep. Um, but that sort of gets ingrained in your blood. I mean, there, you know, you, that volunteerism, that, that, that sort of see a problem, go fix a problem kind of mentality is what gets, you know, built into me. And so uh, it was built into me and, and, and I saw, an, you know, I saw a problem. There was a need for um, many years ago, there was a need for a district administrator in the league where, or in the district where I grew up in little league. And I, but the league has a very clear rule. You can't DA and be an umpire. And so I, I said, okay, well, I want umpire because I want to get to the World, Little League World Series. It's eventually someday. And so I got my mom to become the district administrator. Uh, and, and she was, uh, she, I was there first. So uh, she became district administrator and today she still is. This is her uh, 20th year, 21st year, something like that. Wow. Um, so she's been doing it a long time. And, um, but as part of that, but part of the deal was um, if I did that, then I became an assistant district administrator and uh, which I did. So um, you can still do that in umpire. And, um, you know, over the years, the, the program has changed. The people have changed. I mean, the, the area, the demographics, of that area have changed. Um, but there was still a need for that and the ability to, to, to affect change and, you know, be part of the administrative background is still something that I, I do enjoy aspects of it. Um, some aspects I don't enjoy. Uh, but what it actually did was build me a road, a runway to doing what I'm doing now, which is I, I moved out of that district, which is about 30 miles away to where I grew up to where I live in the city. Now I'm about, uh, I'm in the Northern half of Chicago. Um, I actually am the district umpire in chief for the district that covers Chicago. Uh, and for those of you who probably are aware, you know, there was an issue in 2014 where the team that went to the World Series from Chicago had some issues. 
uh, and unfortunately got stripped of their title. Uh, and rightfully so. I'm not, I'm not making a judgment about that. That was an unfortunate situation all the way around. Uh, but because of that, the pro little league program took a big hit in Chicago proper. And, um, you know, I, there's an opportunity. So I kind of went and so I decided to move to where I really live now and try to affect change there by building a volunteer umpire programs in these leagues in Chicago uh, as part of that role. So um, that's fun the, for me. How, how, do, how do you feel about little league umpires who are actually compensated? Uh, I knew you were going to ask that question. Well, I, I think it's a relevant question, Dave, because yeah, it is. It, it's an ever changing landscape and mm -hmm. it's almost like some programs could go under if they don't pay their umpires. Like, I don't know the answer. Yep. I don't know if it's right or wrong. Yeah, no. And I'm glad you asked that. I mean, I am glad you asked it because mm -hmm. the problem with this question is that it always generates a lot of controversy. And I'm going to try to answer it in the most honest and diplomatic way I can, yep. which is number one, as a district umpire in chief, I'm not the umpire police. Right? I'm not going to go to a league and say, you know what? Uh, you shouldn't be doing that. I mean, because in reality, they can do it. They, they can do it. It's just that they have other provisions they have to do they have to provide insurance and other things which they don't and they won't but right. they have to that's what they have to do um i believe in volunteerism so yeah. first and foremost i believe in volunteerism i believe that if you look at the way little league is structured uh, a, a person much smarter than me uh mark bernstein who is the uic of the west region for little league said this and i agree with him completely that you know, Little League is a le leadership program that uses baseball and softball as its tools. And, and I really believe that. And that's, I've always believed that. And that it's, it's true. Where the challenge comes in is, is you're right. I mean, the umpire profession is a unique thing in baseball and softball. It's the only thing that is put into a judgment position, right, um, of, how, of what happens in a game that, that could affect the outcome of a game. Right. In terms of the actual by the actual play of it, um, you know, coaches and managers and snack bar workers and, you know, board members and all those folks are volunteers and they volunteer their time and they don't get paid. You know, um, some concessions do, of course, because they may outsource that or they may bring it in. But the, the, the intent of the program was to create volunteers okay. and, and create volunteers in the community and, and bring them from the community, be invested in the community and be invested in the, in the program that's becoming much harder to do anyway, regardless of whether it's an umpire or not, just getting volunteers, as I mentioned before, is hard to get to. But where I think I would ask umpires to consider this. When I was umpiring Little League, or in my early days, I was umpiring other ball too, like Babe Ruth and high school and all kinds of things. I got paid for those things and I gladly got paid for those. I was able to afford to do umpiring in Little League by, by volunteering, either through those other program paying me or the job. And the, today I still umpire for free because my job pays me enough. I can do that. Um, I don't hold anything against anybody who needs th that income. That's not what I'm saying. If you need the income, you get the income. You do what you have to do for you because we need these people in our profession. We need umpires. I would just ask that if you have the ability to, to not take pay for the little league program, um, please consider it. The one thing I, I d does kind of chap me a little bit, and I'm going to say this amongst all of us friends here, right? Is that if you say that, you know, you're not going to give your time because you, you should be paid. Okay. That's your right. And that's your prerogative, but don't denigrate those who do. Yeah. And, 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 and in reverse, don't denigrate those who don't. I mean, if you, if you're a volunteer and that's, that's what you do, then don't, then a great people who don't, who don't, I mean, that's their choice. Um, you know, beggars can't be choosers. If you want people to volunteer, you can't tell them that they should <clears throat> can't, you know, beat them over the head for wanting to get paid. That's just the way life is. That's an, a never ending pissing match on Facebook. Yeah, it, it really exactly is. right. So that's why I say, I ask if, if you can do it, please consider it. If you, if you don't want to, or can't, then, then just ignore it. Just don't bother engaging because it's not worth it. That's I, I live with that. That's good. You know, it makes sense. So I've been trying to find the best ever umpire crew photo from 2017 to get your <laughs> comment on it. And I can't oh, seem to no. find it. 
I was wondering I if you find to have either. a copy of it. I, I'm look. I I didn't want to look on while I was on camera, but um, I I, I don't have it. I don't think. But okay. what I will do is, I will find it. I if I can't find a, a JPEG of it, I'll I'll actually find the print copy. I'll take a picture of it. I'll send it to Ray, or I'll post it in Ump Life. I'll post it as the photo. Um, I just want my barber to open up again so I can get a haircut. <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny. I'm luck luckily you can't really see my pandemic hair. I got the pandemic beard going on, but you can't see the pandemic hair. It's um it's uh it's quite flowing. It's flowy, as they say. Yeah, it's getting itchy at the back here. Very glamorous shot looking right now. Look look at Tommy there. He's like uh, uh he's a very handsome man. I mean Tommy, I mean, come on, Tom Councilman, there Senator. Senator Tom Senator Tommy Owens. Yeah. Commissioner. Commissioner yeah. currently. I know exactly. Commissioner oh, yeah. Tommy Owens. Yeah. Tom, you got any questions? Uh, none right now, currently. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm pretty boring. No one. Was Perry, oh, no, Perry I... Barber said she loved our digression into women mentors, etc. That's good. That like, was a comment know, from her. Shout out to all the girls out there, umpires. Absolutely. Yeah. I've, you know, I, I got to tell you, I've worked with a lot of great female umpires, and it's we are, it's a completely, we are definitely underserved there, by far. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can talk to Kelly Elliott Dine all day. Yeah, I've, I've been fortunate to know Kelly through the, pro, the league program, yeah. uh, as well as Facebook. And sure, I mean, you know, it's again just really great. And it's not the only thing she does, right? As you mentioned, she does other other well, great. She, uh, she said, "Oh, could you? I'd like to order a harness for my son. He's he's high school yeah. umpire." I went, "No problem. I'll send it out. Tell me what you want on it." So she did, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to give the kid a, a lineup card folder too. There you go. And then I'm going to give, give him a pencil. I'm going to write on the card inside, have a blast, Ray. Yeah. So I mailed that out to her yesterday and like, she doesn't know what's coming. So no, she does now, but, but, <laughs> yeah, but she goes, I don't forget to send me an invoice. Yeah. Just talking to her all the time. Yeah. That's payment enough. So can I ask a question of you, Ray? Is that yeah. like, is that possible? Sure. Or, I'm sorry, Mr. Moderator. Can I ask a question of Ray? You are allowed, sir. Thank Permission you granted. Um, so, Ray, I, as you know, I am a, uh, a great proponent of your products. I think I own pretty much everything in the product catalog. And if you, I, want, you wanted to set up a direct debit every month. I know. I just, I said, I really just, take, just take my money. How, um, you know, how do you, so you've, I mean, you've kind of branched out now into some other things like equipment bags and that sort of thing. What, um, how do you make the choices on what, you're trying to make for people they literally come to me at 2 30 in the morning all and right there you go if i don't get up and go down and get into corral draw it'll go right out the window mm. so um i remember i had a bag a mizuno bag in europe um and i bought it in the one of the big sports stores over there and it had that false bottom where you could zip it and open it right up like uh the air flawed air aircraft where the nose goes up yeah cargo plane so i thought man i'm gonna draw one of those up and send it to the one of the factories and so i gave her rough dimensions and literally they fired it off and i went oh this is a million times better than what i thought and as i told you off air what the cost of shipping yeah. was going to be till i found an alternative source um so that's how it's basically an idea in my head or or i could be somewhere and look at something and go why did they make it that way? I think I can make a better mousetrap. Sure. So you, I, I'm skilled on a sewing machine. I, and I, I know how to make a pattern. So literally I just throw it down on the table and draw it out, throw it in the computer, print it off, and then start figuring it out. Like I literally was doing those lineup card holders six years before I ever let anybody else know. And, and it was a thing on umpire empire. And the title was, our million years experience, we should be, have a better lineup card holder. And I, I, for a week, I went, should I click that button or not? And I finally pushed the button and we had literally MLB guys contacting me, Jim Kirk contacted me and Sandra and I had to set up a production run in the basement. And that was, so I was talking to Jim the other day from having two items. Now we have 13 items. Yeah in three and a half years. So uh, Jim Jim pushes me, he, uh, he like not pushes me, but he gives me ideas and, yeah. or I'll ask him, what do you think of this? And he goes, that sounds pretty cool. So that's how it's a collaboration between 
sporting goods and what I do and my relationship with umpire.com. Like literally Jim Kirk is, he has been a mentor, but he's been a really good uh, person to bounce ideas off. And he's asked me ideas. Hey, what do you think of this? We might bring this in yeah. and I wouldn't touch it. Here's why. So it, it's, it's, and I talked to lots of people about what I'm going to do next. And that's how I do it. Like um, that bag is going to happen, but I'm already thinking, I, I wish I could make that as big as an e-bag mm -hmm. and with wheels. So that may, that's something that could happen next year. And I always plan like the next year, like the plate coat, mm -hmm. if we, if we really get it done, it won't be till next year. Cause it's going to take that long to nail sure. it down. And I'm doing my best right now to get Joe West in one when he breaks the record, if it's there you a, go. a cold day. So, yep. and he's already said he'd endorse it. So, and, and like, we're going to do uh lineup card holders and he's going to change it out every half inning and we're going to raffle them for um scare charity. That's great. And, yeah, I, and you know what? We could maybe do some for something for you too. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I'm in for a plate coat. Seriously. I, you know, I would love to, I've, I've been trying to, so <laughs> in my own defense, uh, I need to probably lose a few pounds, but um, you know, years ago, I tried to go to hone eggs and other places for a plate coat and they just don't have, I'm a 54 long and they stop at like 50, I think at hone eggs. Right. So uh, for those of us who have a little extra ballast, um, I would love to, to love to be able to have a plate coat. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Well, that's, that's basically how it happens. Like I think of something or I go back to my hockey days where I could repair something and that's how it all started. When I was getting goalie equipment built, I'd ask for modifications and I'd pay the money and they show up and they just built me a regular pad. So I'd take it apart and do that modification. So I like I used to restring baseball gloves and repalm hockey gloves, and there was a never-ending lineup at the door. I have to tell you, I'm exceptionally jealous that you are re refitting Carlucci's. Um, again, I don't. Unfortunately, they don't fit me really. I don't think you know. I mean, I I never knew CC. I mean, I never talked with him. So, yeah. um, but I mean, I I would love to have a Carlucci, or I'm looking forward to the to the ump ump life Carlucci clone. I'm actually trying to negotiate with the Carlucci family right now to actually use the name. Oh, good for you. That's yeah. great. I mean, you know, that's, that's awesome. I would love to have one. And, and that's something still in the works. Like a uh, quick story. Um, I bought myself a, um, a scroll saw, an expensive scroll saw with a stand. Saw. And I brought it home yesterday actually and started to set it up. Well, there's no plastic feet and there's no screws to put the table together. So yeah. I think I bought I bought an open box. So take it back to Lowe's, and now I have to wait for another one to get delivered. But yeah, I mean I've got sheets of ABS over here, over there, <laughs> and I'm going to start finishing my Carlucci. There you go. I mean, so, uh, you know, and then uh, ex uh, chest pad extensions. I'm going to do those for guys. So it's it's little things that you can add to, as Jim says, your SKUs. So I've yeah. got 13, but. I also have like you have the chair, you got the yeah. carpet. So that's like Jim doesn't have that, but yeah. I probably have twenty things. But some things I push hard, and some things they're little projects. And yeah, there you go. Like I mean, that's one of the best uh, you see chairs there. I've ever done. Yeah, I'm. I, I was great. So by the way, for those of you who may not be able to see that, uh, Ray was very kind uh, to do a, a a commemorative rug and a chair. Uh, for me for my world series appearance so um thank you again ray for that because you honor me i'm really grateful well, it, it's amazing uh, people will say oh i need a i'm working the little league world series can you do this for me because um i have to bring a gift for everybody well i it's hard for me because six eight people contact me and they all want the same thing to bring <laughs> and, yeah. and i kind of say i that's already taken care of uh but people don't realize that every time this happens i have to get a license from Little League, and you know it, like it's you fill out a form or you yeah. fill out a form send it to me i send it back to you and they they issue the license or they don't and i think one time they were kind of stuck on it and then the person explained to them hey this is a once in a lifetime thing it's not going to be advertised no one can see it that's so right. they need to do it so that's one of the little hoops i have to jump through and 
I love doing it every year, and it's unfortunate this year I won't be doing anything for the umpires because it's not going to happen. So, yeah, no. If anybody has any questions about that process, feel free to reach out to me or Ray. We went through quite a bit of that because I had actually brought lineup card holders yeah. for all of the sixteen umpires uh, that were a part of the crew. Hey, Tommy, could you do me a favor? Could you put this website up for a second? I wanted to say one thing um, really quickly. Uh, and if you scroll all the way to the top, first of all, um, this is all, I did all this, this, I'm the webmaster too. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a very low staff at here at UWB. Yeah. But, you know, I'm, there's that, there's that button that's called donate up there. If you would, you know, click it for a second. I mean, I just want to show you one, wow. this picture, that's the, that's the actual gear. And there's other pictures in the site where um, the folks in Nigeria actually went and cleaned all of it and washed it. I did see that. And you've got everything in here from plus pause gear to some Wilson's to Honig's. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here, but if you scroll down for a second, um, Tommy, if you wouldn't mind, thank you so much. You know, there's an easy way to send stuff to me or to us. And that's basically, there's a form here. You can fill all this out. It goes directly to email. I, you know, I get it. And uh, I've got a couple of friends who help out occasionally and sort and sift through things. So we've got that, but here's the other thing you can actually go. If you scroll back up, Tommy, thank you uh, to the volunteer button. There's actually a volunteer, you know, we could use you, right? It's not just using, your gear. I mean, yes, your gear is helpful. And, and we've gotten a number of people very recently who've signed up. But we need your help to, to do things, to collect stuff, to potentially be an arm and a leg of us elsewhere, right? To, to train people, to be, you know, there's all kinds of things. You know, if, you, if anybody wants to do some office administration, like, you know, I, I got some work for you to do. I mean, basically, at the end of the day, you know, we could use your help. Um, whether it's money, I mean, we could use money, definitely. I mean, everybody can, but we could use, use your help too. And this is actually, I actually did some remote training via, um, at the time it was WebEx, but via WebEx with them, uh, to, in Nigeria, which was pretty interesting. It was very difficult, unfortunately, because the connections were bad, but it was still a lot of fun. But, uh, Tommy, I think you had a, you had another question or two in the chat. Is that right? That is correct. So uh, David Duarte, again, asked a question. And we know in these uncertain times that we have right now with uh, the different states having requirements come out and whatnot, um, on 90 degree days, how would a plate umpire be able to wear a mask? Um, and so that's that's actually a good question. And I, I see this ask a lot in a lot of our groups. So what's your yeah. take on that? Yeah, I'm not sure I'm qualified to answer it, but I have a thought, which is very diff it's very difficult for a plate umpire to wear a mask. I mean, a mask under a mask, right? Um, I personally would, I mean, I can do it. I could do it. Um, I I'm choosing not to, uh, I'm choosing not to engage in, in, in any umpire activity at this point in time. Um, the district here in Chicago, for example, is not so far doing any of it. So, um, and most of the little league districts in Illinois, at least aren't getting, doing anything right now. Um, I think it's exceptionally difficult. And I think it is, um, I'm not sure it's worth the extra effort. That being said, if you, again, if you have to be on the field or you need to be on the field because of income or because of other, or you just choose to, then I think it's prudent to wear a mask and to be, uh, you know, to, to, to practice all of the various disciplines of distancing and, you know, care and concern and cleanliness and all those sorts of things. Well, what's devastating uh, is when you think of, um, how many umpires are also other sports officials and they've exactly. chosen to actually make this their living. Yeah. No, um, agreed. You can't, you can't put a number on it. Well, you can put a number on it, but it's just incredible how many people it seems like in America do this for their job. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's what's happened is devastating. No, it absolutely is. And I, and I want to be very clear because I know people we're, we're obviously dealing in very sensitive times. Yeah. I am not suggesting in any way, shape or form that people should or shouldn't get on a field or whatever. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I personally am not going to, cause I can choose not to. Um, 
I, I, my ask is, and I'm, and I'm going to be just be honest with you. I'm, I'm a mask wearing kind of person. I want you to wear masks in public right now. I want you to be, take the precautions. It's not living in fear to me. It's living in, in, it's being prudent with other people's potential health. Um, even if it doesn't work, it's still better than nothing. Um, I would ask that you consider it. Um, but no, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, we're talking about here in the States, you know, somewhere on the order of 30 million, you know, people unemployed that's in the, the quote unquote, the real work. Yeah, yeah. Right. Now add to that some number. I don't know what that number is, but it's, I'm sure it's gotta be relatively high, uh, that were, you know, the sports official, the high school sports official, for example, is got nothing. I mean, if we had nothing all spring, they'll have nothing over the summer for the most part, and they may not have anything in the fall. And that's, that's huge. And that's, I, you know, I don't take that away from anybody. Tommy. Uh, that's it for the question, sir. So Dave, where do you see umpires without borders in five years? Well, you know, I, I'd like to, I think I'd like to see a, a branching out to, you know, Europe as having like a European designation or location probably uh asia pacific uh maybe not asia pacific but maybe like middle you know uh, mid east or um you know asia minor designation somewhere where you know we can sort of minimize some of that uh overhaul travel or we could do it in bulk you know uh and be able to distribute from there um, and again i'm looking for anybody any volunteers who want to help figure that out because i'm i'm all ears um, to blake taylor in the uk yeah so i worked with blake yeah at the regional in Poland last year and was going to all set to go out and watch him in Williamsport. But unfortunately we know how that ended up, right. but yeah, Blake is definitely one of the people I'm, I'm talking to, you know, just in general terms about it. Um, I, I mentioned it when we, I was there in Poland last year and we were trying to figure some, some, some things out. Uh, matter of fact, a number of the German umpires actually donated some stuff nice. as well. So that was really cool. And uh, I was really grateful for that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I don't know, except that I, I want to be able to say, come back on a, on a got to ask with, with Ray Brownlee and, and say, you know what, we not only have we served, you know, double what we did in 2020, we're at four or five times that across, you know, 25 countries and across, you know, uh, any number of demographics. I mean, that to me would be success. Well, not only doing the, this tonight, but anytime you want to post on Ump Life, you know you can. Well, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Thank you. I try not to take advantage of that because, well, you know. Well, I, I, I'm all for uh, things that make sense. It's the stuff that we, other stuff we have to deal with that tick yeah. us off, but that's a cause that's, uh, I, I like uh, Ump's Care, but I also like what you're doing. And um, Thank you. And I'm trying to hook up with Ump's Care too, by the way, um, just yeah. to see if there's some synergy there. And, I, and I've gotten some very nice feedback from a number of folks in various other similar types of organizations. Uh, matter of fact, think, I, I've I been paired up with a couple of people. So that's kind of nice. One opportunity that could, could have, like you could, could explore is next year if they're doing the UK games and a European game. Yeah. Um, that could be a way to bring equipment to because when they shipping in all that stadium yeah uh, you could ship in the equipment too so you could do a mm -hmm. and if you could get it to to the uk you can get it into europe a lot cheaper yeah exactly so, and that's that's um, exactly right that's something worth exploring and um you know, i will there's people that i can talk to about that too because i i think it's it's teaming up is is a good thing too so well yeah and this is i mean i'm not unique in doing this right there are other folks are doing it matter of fact there's a referee article that came out, I want to say two months ago, uh, where someone was doing it on his own. He was just doing his own thing. And uh, I actually posted on our blog on the website. Uh, that it's not us. We're not the same people. But yeah. I mean, a lot of people are talking about it. A lot of people are thinking about it. A lot of people are doing their own things. And if we could just pool our resources, uh, I, I don't own the concept. I just own the UWB thing. Well, it's like two weeks ago when that guy was reaching out to uh, he'd been sober for so long and he wanted to uh, ask for equipment so he could help donate to people. And I said, have you, you, why don't you contact Dave Ducat? And you knew the guy. Yeah, that's right. I, I thought that was uh, Bobby Zapata. Yeah. Bobby, yeah. if you're out there, shout out to Bobby. Uh, also a world series umpire for little league. Um, right. Yeah. Bobby's a great guy. Um, you know, a great passionate volunteer. Uh, and he wants to be, he wants to help, but we're going to put him to work. So 
Well, I'm going to help you out with a box of mask harnesses. Oh, you are awesome so much. You don't so have they're, to. They're heading out tomorrow for you, buddy. You are you're incredible. Thank you and so I'll much. I'll look around uh, at the lockup, see what else I can hook, hook you up with. Thank you so much. And like I said, you know, you, Ray, you know, again, all things aside, right. You've been an incredible supporter of, of my vision here. Okay. Um, and it's, it's, I can't thank you enough. I can't thank the folks enough for listening at home. Uh, and thank you for those who have, re who have reached out, who've donated money, who've donated equipment, who've donated their feedback, who've donated their time. You know, this is a volunteer thing. And I'm really grateful that you've been able, that people have been able to do that. And you, of all people, Ray, have been a champion of this thing right out of the gate. So thank you so much. So here, here's here's what we got to do. We got to find two or three people in each state and get them to collect yep. and get it to a central location and then do that and do that. And then, then we got to find a shipper. So yeah, I think it can be done. And let's say, let's find a ton of equipment. Let's get it. Let's make it now. Let's get a ton or half a ton or Whatever. Sounds great to me, Mike. And, and let's, I'll, I'll help you any way I can. And uh, I'll reach out to some of my contacts here in Canada and, and everywhere else. So maybe we can do something really, uh, you know, not a one time thing, but let's keep it going. And when, when I ask you in four years, where are you now? You go, I can't keep up. So, exactly. No, I, I appreciate that. And that's very, that's great advice. And I look forward to that. And again, folks, if you're listening or want more information, the website's out there, umpireswithoutborders.com. Really easy to get to. Um, if you have any questions, they come right to me. So feel free to you know, shoot a note out or if you see me on Facebook, ask. Um, you know, I, love, I appreciate feedback too, right? If you have something you want to tell me, please tell me. Hey, if you're out and about and uh, this weekend and you're in a, a, a thrift store and you see an umpire mask or some shin pads, there are a couple of bucks. Pick it up and send them to Dave. Yeah, I actually am working with Play It Against Sports. Which Garage is a, sales. Yeah, Play It Against Sports is kind of one of those locations here in the States that does yeah. that. Um, it's Unfortunately, I mean, it's not necessarily good serviceable gear, so um, that's a challenge. It has to be serviceable, folks. I mean, yeah, I, I, I just don't have the time to, to fix it myself and clean it up. I mean, I can clean it up to some degree. I also We also take clothing, too, so umpire shirts, okay. pants, shoes i have got you know i've got a garage full that's my garage is is right now on first up boards warehouse i mean we'll take all that stuff um so please please so please now, please now if someone sends you a mask and there's no harness you've got a box of harnesses i know exactly that's that's exactly what we'll do um yeah. and that's great and i appreciate that and i probably have some of the old uh chest pad harnesses too Again, we'll take whatever you can you can give because I would love if, th if that's the case. I would certainly put them on there anyway, just regardless, because most of them, you know, the, the harness is the first thing it wears out anyway. What so. I'll do is uh, I'll go up there tomorrow and have a look because what what I'd like to do is mm -hmm. obviously these ones have the Ump Life logo on them, but yeah. the harness I'd actually like if I don't know how many I have left over, but let's say there's fifty of them, mm -hmm. I'm going to stick your logo on the fifty. Oh, well, thank you for that. That way it goes around the world, wherever it's going. And you know what? They're going to say thank you, but it's going to have your logo on it. I'm part of that border, so I'll, uh, I'll do that. Well, it's you. actually your logo because you designed it. Well, it's my logo too, but like, you know what? <laughs> I, I, think it, that's, yeah. I think that's kind of cool. No, it is great. And that's thank you for that. That's a great, no great thing. And um, like I said, yeah, there are folks who are willing to to be collectors in states. Yeah. You know, Chicago is centrally located, right? You can get to, you can ship something to Chicago really pretty much ground for very little money hey we'll and, talk to bob boehner he's on the yeah. he, he's got the train tracks so exactly he's, exactly he's you know he's a singer and a conductor i mean there go you figure. go we'll, we'll talk to boehner about that too yeah but i mean that's you know i do have a you know the address is on the website feel free to you know it's right there it, it, you know we, they, they accept, throw it up there too yeah exactly so please 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 if you know anybody and, and i realize like i said it's pandemic season right so it's difficult to to part with a lot of stuff right now yeah but please consider it and we'll be very thankful. All right. So we're, we're done, Tommy. Yeah, we're over time. Okay. Well, you know what? Nothing wrong with going over time. So, <laughs> well, thank you, know you again. I really enjoyed this, Dave. It was, uh, it was an interesting show and a, a really good way to do uh, in ser series two, because it's different than talking to an umpire. It's actually, you're on a mission and, I liked it and I'm going to do everything I can to help you. And I'm going to talk to as many people as I can to help you. 
Thank you so much, Ray. And it was great. It was a lot of fun. And Tommy, of course, as always, it's great to talk with you. And thank you for everybody who's out there listening or tuning in or who will listen because uh, it's your it's your inv- your investment and your energy and your passion which helps me be successful. So thank you for for taking the time. So before I go, thanks for watching everybody. Um, it was fun, and I'm working on the guests for the next show, and I'm turning it over to Tommy. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for joining us for the broadcast of Gotta Ask with tonight's guest, Dave Ducat. Please join us for our future broadcasts. This episode will be posted to the Ump Life page and the Ump Life YouTube channel later this evening. Have a good evening and may you and your family stay safe and healthy. What I was missing all that time in England sent me aimlessly and for a body help of transportation to knock on windows where